For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So next up is the ionic size or ionic radius. And this really isn't too much different from atomic radius, except that um, we're not going to look at it quite like a trend. But let's start off with the definition. The ionic radius uh, is the radius of an ion when it's part of a crystalline ionic compound. Okay. An example of which would be like something like NaCl, right? Um, if you think about sodium chloride, right, NaCl, it's really Na plus and Cl minus, right? And they're attracted to each other. So we can imagine uh, these sort of uh, gray cations as sodium ions. And we can imagine these green guys as uh, chloride ions. The point is that they would arrange themselves in sort of like a, a lattice like this, a crystalline ionic compound. And um, the way we look at the ionic radius, it's really just the radius of the ion when it's part of this ionic compound. So if I highlight, if I bring up the, uh, um, this pink sort of depiction is the R minus, that's the radius of the anion. And the R plus here is the radius of the cation. So really nothing, not really different from uh, atomic radius. It's just that now we're not talking about just the atoms. We're not, we're not talking about the neutral atoms. We're talking about um, ions that are charged, right? So like I said, you don't want to think of this as a sort of trend um, like we did with the others. Simply apply what you know about ionics, or excuse me, about atomic size, right? The fact that it increases going to the left and down, right? And also keep in mind things about the effect of nuclear charge as well as shielding and build off of that when you when you go through this. So really the question is what's going on with cations and what's going on with anions. So when compared to their parent atoms, cations are smaller. Okay, why is that? Well, if something is a cation, it's positively charged it's positively charged because it lost an electron or lost electrons. So there are less electrons, okay, in a cation than as compared to their parent atom, right? They lost electrons, so they, now they have less electrons. If they have less electrons, that means there's less shielding, right? If there's less shielding, the electrons aren't repelling from each other nearly as much, um, and, and there's not that many of them, then the effect of nuclear charge, right, the positive charge that the electrons feel is higher, right, because there's less electrons there to, to pull on that, that uh, positive charge. So if the effect of nuclear charge is higher, this means that the electrons are pulled closer to the nucleus, the electrons that are, that are still there in the ion, right, and they're going to be pulled closer to the nucleus, thus making the cation smaller. Okay, so we can think of Na plus versus Na, right? So Na is the neutral atom, okay? And Na plus is the cation. Let's think about the number of protons each, uh, each of them has and the number of electrons each has. Well, they're both sodium. So if you look on a periodic table, the atomic number is uh, 11, okay? They each have 11 protons. And sodium, being that it's neutral, has just as many electrons as it does protons to balance out the charge, 11. Na plus though, sodium ion, lost an electron, so it only has 10 electrons. So what's happening is that in the atom, these protons, these 11 protons, are pulling on these 11 electrons with a certain effective nuclear charge, right, effective charge. But the cation, when it has one less electron, the effect that these 11 positive charges have on on these electrons is now greater, right? They're pulling those 10 in closer. And so between these two, the Na plus is smaller. Okay. Now, as far as anions go, anions compared to their parent atoms, um, this should say parent, not parents. Um, when compared to their parent atoms, anions are bigger. Okay, And anions 
ha are negatively charged because they gained electrons. So there's more electrons. So if there's more electrons, there's going to be more shielding, and the electrons will be uh, repelled by the inner electrons a little bit more. Thus, and, and so the positive charges in the nucleus can't pull on them as much. So the effective nuclear charge decreases. And so the electrons are not pulled in closer to the nucleus. So uh, instead, they kind of go out a little bit. And so the anion is bigger. So here, when you think about the same, same idea here, number of protons versus the number of electrons, both of them are chlorines. So they each have 17 protons, right? That's just the atomic number. And the uh, chlorine atom has 17 electrons, but the, uh, the chlorine anion has one more electron, which would be 18. So the, the effect that these 17 protons have on um, the 18 electrons is not as much as it, as it was here, right? The effective nuclear charge initially um, was between 17 protons and 17 electrons, but if there's one more electron to pull in, the pro those protons can't quite pull them in in the same way or not as close. So in this case, what happens is that the chlorine ion is bigger because it's an anion. So let's try these three practice problems ranking um, what, what's given from smallest to largest. And let's apply the same idea. So if you look at O2 minus, F minus, Ne, Na plus, Mg, they're all different um, they, they are all different in their nuclei, right? They have a different number of protons for each of these. The number of protons in each of these, oxygen has eight, right? So atomic number is eight. Uh, fluorine has got nine, neon's got 10, um, sodium has 11, and magnesium has 12. But if we look at the number of electrons they have, if you count up for oxygen, oxygen gained two, so it's gonna have two more than eight, which would be 10. Fluorine, its atom gained one to become F minus, so it's got nine plus one, which is 10. Neon is just neon, it's not an ion, so it's still, it has 10 electrons, just as many uh, as it has protons. The sodium cation lost an electron, so it's at it's got 10, and the magnesium uh, cation uh, resulted from the magnesium losing two electrons as well, so. Um, Notice they all have the same number of electrons, right? They all have the same number of electrons. They're all equal. Well, I should just put equal sign in between all of these, right? They all have the same number of electrons. But they have different numbers of protons. Magnesium has the most protons. So what does this mean? The difference that between these is the effective nuclear charge. The one that has the highest effective nuclear charge is going to have the, the protons pulling on the electrons most. So this, mag the Mg2 plus has 12 protons pulling on 10 electrons uh, and it goes down, down to the left, um, oxygen has only eight, right? So which is gonna be able to pull those 10 electrons m closer to the nucleus? The Mg2 plus. So this is going to pull the electrons in and this is going to be the smallest and this is going to be the largest, right? So if we go through and rank them, it would be Mg2 plus is smaller then Na+, plus, which is smaller than Ne, which is smaller than F-, minus, which is smaller than O2-. minus. Now, if we think about this one in part B, we've got K+, plus, Rb+, plus, and uh, Cs+, plus, right? What I noticed about these guys is that they're all in the same column. So I don't even need to think about um, the effect of nuclear charge because when, it, when you're talking about a group, right? So I should put slash group, column slash group. Down a group or up a group, the number of shells and shielding, the principal quantum number, that's what dominates over um, as, as far as determining the size, right? So if you look at these uh, on the periodic table, K is right above um, RB, potassium right above rubidium, which is right above cesium. So the largest one will be the one that's furthest down and to the left. Since they're all in the same column, it's just the furthest one down. So cesium is the biggest, and potassium is the smallest. All right, so that's their order, smallest to largest. Now between Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus, 
they have the same number of protons because they're both iron. And that is 26, 26 protons each. Fe2 plus uh, lost two electrons, so it has 24 electrons. And Fe3 plus lost three, so it has 23 electrons. So now they both have the same uh, nucle actual nuclear charge, 20, 26 protons, but the Fe2 plus has to, has to pull more electrons and the Fe3 plus does not have to pull as much. So Fe3 plus will have the higher effective nuclear charge and therefore will be smaller, right? So Fe3 plus is smaller and then Fe2 plus is bigger. So you would rank them like this. Fe3 plus is smaller than Fe2 plus, okay? Um, so, and, and these are both of the, the same um, elements, right? The different ions. So now, as far as successive ions go, it's worth mentioning that successive cations are smaller, while successive anions are bigger. Right here we have Fe2 plus Fe3 plus. As you lose more electrons, you will be smaller. As you gain more electrons, you will be bigger. Okay. So that's basically it. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.